I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is Sunday, July the 5th. It's the fifth Sunday after the Pentecost, and we continue on with our readings from Matthew. As I told you, um, we weren't able to do the Matin service this week, so I did want to at least give you a chance to hear the gospel appointed and to hear the sermon for the day. And then uh, next week, hopefully, we'll be able to record the full service for you, but we're still working on the technology. God's blessings. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is hardly any wonder that these words are so famous and so often quoted. For who among us doesn't long for rest? Who among us doesn't feel worn out from the labors of this life? And who doesn't feel heavy laden at times? But it turns out that Jesus isn't speaking about the exhaustion that follows hard labor. The weariness that he's seeing and what he seeks to ease is that weariness of heart and spirit that settles upon us for all sorts of reasons. Maybe you watch the news too much, and the world with all of its evil and tragedies and heartaches just wears you out. Or maybe you've been seeking to reconcile uh, people within the family, or maybe some of your friends or, or co-workers, and rather than things getting any better, it seems like the bitterness only grows, and, and you get tired of it, you get weary. Or maybe it's a health issue that has burdened you, or maybe it's your job. There are literally thousands of things that can wear us out, leave us feeling burned out, that seem heavy burdens threatening to crush us. And Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor hard, and I will give you rest. It seems too good to be true. Relief. Rest. Again, is it any wonder that these words are so popular? Yet... The labors that wear us out, the burdens that so occupy us are not what Jesus is finally getting at here. And that's why we do well to spend some time with these words so that we can hear and receive the promise rightly and then enter into the true rest of Christ. So what is going on here? Jesus is addressing the crowds after he has sent the twelve out to proclaim and herald the kingdom. And Jesus is speaking to these expectant folks who are looking to him to do something really great and glorious. And he's speaking to people who at the same time are a little confused by what they've actually been seeing and hearing in Jesus. Or at this time, Herod had already thrown John the Baptist into his dungeon. At this time, there were whole towns and villages that were ignoring the kingdom in spite of demons being put to flight and diseases being healed. And in one case, a little girl being raised to life. So was God really at work establishing his kingdom in the proclamation of Christ, or wasn't he? Well, listen again to Jesus. Father, I thank you that you have hidden these things from the wise and the understanding and revealed them to little children. Was, is God at work with the proclamation of the kingdom? The answer is yes. How do we know? Little children are getting it, and, and they get it as much in our own days at the time of Jesus' public ministry, I should add. Here's the deal. We are sometimes tempted to wonder that if the church is so great, if we really have truth and life and salvation, if we have rest for the weary and comfort, if we have hope for the downtrodden and so on, then why aren't people beating down the doors to try and get in? Are we just deluding ourselves? And don't think this is just a problem for conservative traditional Lutherans. There are some wildly successful, big, contemporary, non-denominational churches out there. They seem to be packing folks in, but I would point out that even with those churches in ready supply, it is still the case that more than 60% of our neighbors in this area are avoiding all kinds of churches, period. So what is God up to? Why don't we see more of this harvest being gathered in? Well, because the wise 
and the understanding don't get it. They can't get it. They don't want it. But hear me carefully. Jesus wants them. There are none whom Jesus doesn't seek and doesn't want. But the wise and the understanding don't want him. And we have to be on guard against being like them. So who are they? Well, the wise are the educated, the, the smart, the intellectually savvy. Now, there's nothing wrong with education and intelligence until, until one thinks that her or his learning makes Jesus kind of unnecessary. There are folks who get so impressed with what they know and what they can solve with their minds and what they can comprehend that they believe they are self-sufficient, that they have all they need in themselves. In fact, just this last Friday, there was a TV personality quoted as saying exactly this. We don't need any help from above because everything we need is in us. These sorts of people can become so full of themselves, they have room left for nothing else. And these folks who say, Paul noted, look at the cross and at Jesus and at God, and they conclude it is all foolishness. The wise, according to the wisdom of this world, according to the wisdom of this age, they don't get it. Self-sufficiency is deadly to the spirit. It chokes off light and life by turning us in on ourselves and turning us away from Jesus. For only Jesus can give rest and light and life. Now, the other group of self-sufficient types who didn't and who don't get it, whom the proclamation of the kingdom is pointless, the other group that Jesus mentioned are the understanding, the prudent. These are folks who know how to get along with the world in order to get along in the world. They believe they know how people tick. They know how the world works. They may not be formally educated or intellectually sophisticated, but they have learned from the streets. They have learned from the school of hard knocks. They have learned from dealing with the world, and they know how to make friends and influence people. They know how to give a little in order to get a little. They know how to flatter or threaten or get even when they're crossed. They know the world. They know how to get ahead. And to them, the kingdom of forgiveness and mercy and grace, all of that is just pie in the sky. Let that be for the weak. Let the strong do what they will. The wise, the understanding, they don't get the proclamation of the kingdom because they don't think they need it. They think they're just fine. They don't want it. And that's why preachers have to warn you against getting full of yourselves or thinking that you don't need Jesus as much as some others that you can think of. You get to thinking and feeling like that and you run the danger of losing Christ even though he wants you. You risk losing him because you risk not wanting him. But there are those who do want him, who do need Jesus, and who know it. These are the little children. And Jesus doesn't mean just young children or infants here. As often as not, when Jesus speaks of children, the little ones, the poor ones, he's speaking of those who know that they don't amount much to this world. They are not full of themselves. And in fact, they know that they have no place, no standing, no status in this world. They are sinners weighed down with guilt and shame. They are marginalized because maybe their work is humble or they have poor education or they're of the wrong race or they speak the wrong language. They are the outcasts, the weak. They are unimpressive. They're the ones who get picked last for any team. They are generally thought of as worthless if they are thought of as all. These are the ones that Jesus called blessed in his Sermon on the Mount. And remember, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. And why is it that these folks get in on the kingdom? Because they know too well that if God doesn't do everything for them by grace in Jesus, then they have no hope. If the wise and the understanding miss the boat because they think they're just fine, the little children receive the kingdom of Christ precisely because they know they are not. And so they hear Christ, and they recognize him as the one sent to them from the Father, sent to all and sent for all, whether all want him or not. And in Jesus they discover the truth about the Father, that he is loving and gracious and kind. He's no remote judge coolly examining our works and keeping record of our sins. He is Abba Father, who ever and always wants us to be redeemed and restored. And so Jesus comes and says, Come to me, you who labor, who are heavy laden, I will lift your burdens. I will give you rest. But this weary labor and burden that he's come to relieve is not finally a matter of the trials and troubles of this world. It is finally about sin and guilt. For that is what no one can really remove 
improve by their own efforts, and yet we try to all the time. That is, we try to fix ourselves and get rid of our sin. You see, there's the law, and then there's grace. And what we are tempted to do, and what many religions encourage us to do, is to try and fix ourselves by the law. Work at getting rid of those bad thoughts, those bad feelings, those sinful habits, and so on. And then go help this person. Go join that cause. Go sacrifice that particular pleasure. There's so much labor done in the hope that it would alleviate guilt, that it would cover shame. But it never does that, does it? This is the heavy burden. This is the labor that makes the soul weary. And when you've had enough of trying that, says Jesus, when you have enough of trying to save yourself, come to me, and I'll take your sin, your guilt, your condemnation to myself, and deal with it once and for all. For in his flesh on the cross, as our sacrifice, Jesus paid the debt we all owe. Let me take your burden, and you, you take my yoke. Now, that doesn't sound very promising, replacing one burden with another. For a yoke, we know, is placed on a work animal so that it can go ahead and pull the plow or haul the wagon. But Jesus says, fear not, my yoke is easy. My burden is light for you. For Jesus' burden that he carries is your sin. And that was heavy for him. But letting him do the work for us, that's light for me. Let him have your sin. Trust and rely on him to take that sin and save you. And his yoke on you is easy because all he simply wants from you is for you to learn from him. To be a disciple of him who is gentle and lowly of heart. His yoke is not given as a burden for you, as if you were simply just supposed to go out and do some more complicated work. Rather, it's a guide, it's a guard to keep you and keep you in the right pathways for his namesake and for your good. He forgives, he ever looks after you. He is always pointing you to eternal life. So rest in him. Believe and trust that by his work, he has brought you peace with the Father, that he gives you freedom from sin and death and the devil, and that his grace is without end. Rest in him, and then go forward wearing his yoke and walking as he guides you. Even so, amen, and now may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the glorious day of his appearing. Amen. With that, I bid you a good day. God's blessings to you, and I'll look forward to uh, having devotions tomorrow. Bye-bye.